Lancaster. Lynn Lancaster. Lynn Lancaster. Lynn Lancaster. Thanks for joining us. Because they're worried about mergers and acquisitions and downsides. They're worried they're going to lose their jobs. Gen Xers might be looking for career pathing, flexible work options, what kinds of projects they're specifically going to be working on. Diane Sawyer from ABC said, whether you're a tongue-tied preppy or a starch shirt traditionalist, Lynn will help you see the world through the eyes of another generation. Would you please join me in welcoming Lynn Lankett. A lot of people say to us, haven't we already talked about generations? And I'm always saying, of course you have. But do you really know how those issues are playing out in your workplace? Generation Xers for over a decade have been the most high-tech person at work. And now those millennials are coming. They've got more things in their pockets than we've got on our desk. That's true. They've been the generation that has fought tooth and nail to get their organizations to provide them with more feedback and information. And they're barely still getting it. And now they're going to have to turn around and manage millennials who want feedback and more face-to-face -face and mentoring and coaching and contact and meetings. Where are they going to find the time? One of the best things about our topic is that it resonates with everybody from the traditionalist CEO to the baby boomer boss to that Gen Xer running a department down to that millennial new hire or even an intern. And how many topics can say that? My husband, a traditionalist, said, of course we have fun around here. Anybody who comes in on Sunday gets to dress down. <laughs> so, you know, the definitional thing is going to be an issue. We start out by doing our homework. We interview leaders, we interview individual contributors and managers and supervisors, and we ask them, what's top of mind for you? What are your issues that we can help reflect in our content so we can help you find solutions? We say, what can we show in a multimedia presentation that's going to glow from the stage to bring home those points? And it could be anything from a website to a screen grab to a video, a commercial, a clip from a TV show, facts and statistics, findings from their own organization. And we put it all together to make something creative and unique that's just for them. I am so delighted to have you as my client. Uh, because I've been your client for over 40 years. And um, we. <laughs> Writing that first book, When Generations Collide, opened so many doors. We were the first book to really not just talk about a single generation, but to talk about what happens when all four generations show up in the workplace and bump smack into each other. It's a huge issue. In fact, we, one thing you're talking about is fairness. Younger employees want to know why they can't be promoted based on merit. Older employees say, hey, I've been here a lot longer. I deserve more. But as long as you tie fairness really to a productivity issue, then you're going to be on safe ground with the generations. Now I'm excited all over again because there's a new book, The M Factor. And this time we're zeroing in on the millennial generation just as they're showing up in droves in the workplace with a whole new set of ideas, expectations, aspirations for how the world of work should operate. We asked people, who's the toughest generation to work with? And hands down, traditionalists, baby boomers, and Xers all cited the millennials. Toughest generation. What made it worse? Even 25% of the millennials said they thought their generation. <laughs> this is sad. <laughs> We want to take a much deeper dive and say, what is this generation from the point of view of research? And we did a whole bunch of things. We collected case studies and best practices from leading corporations. We got the voice of the millennials. We interviewed hundreds of millennials in all different industries to hear what they think about their entry into the workplace. And then we took it a step further. We did a huge national survey with our survey partner, I4CP, to say, what do the numbers look like? How can we put the stats behind the stories and draw some business conclusions about what it means to have a whole new generation showing up at work? We're already seeing a trend toward companies having to teach etiquette programs, how to dress appropriately, business writing, communication skills classes, even appropriate communication. Is it OK to yell at somebody via email? Is it okay to ask for feedback at the urinal? 
Somebody asked me that a few weeks ago. I'm still mulling it over. I've been in the speaking world a long time, and I have a pet peeve. And that is that I think too many people settle for speakers who just tell them some new things to think about. And to me, that's not enough. We need to be able to get in front of a client or an audience and not just tell them something new to think about, but tell them what they can do about it the very next day. Well, I've been talking about some national and international trends and about our four wonderful generations who are transforming the workforce before our very eyes. And I, I encourage all of you to become a generational information junkie and to help transform your worlds to be more generationally tuned in and smart. It'll be a challenge, but it will also be one of the most fun things you ever do. Thanks so much for having me.